welcome back everybody thanks for tuning in uh, today I'm gonna do a little video about artificial lift and that type of artificial lift is gonna be mainly or just gas lift so if you watched my natural gas compression in a nutshell uh, video this is going to go with it and how uh, us in the production side of the oil field use uh, gas lifting techniques the, the technique of injecting high pressure gas into the casing side of a well um, in order to lift fluid uh, from your vertical in your well to bring it up to the surface in order for us to separate the oil gas and water sell uh, oil in the gas and get rid of the water so this will be in a nutshell I'm not gonna try to go into great depth but we'll give you some good background uh, I'm going to leave the camera looking at this rough sketch that I did, and I'm just going to point and explain what I can. Um, so, gas lifting, the thought is, like I said, to take high-pressure gas, insert it into the casing of a well, and lift through the tubing string. So, what you would have here is your tubing all the way down. This is all going to be TVD, total vertical depth. Okay, and then you've got your casing, which comes down, and it goes all the way into the well. This is where your you would have this is where your you drill set plugs frack once this is all drilled out this is your well okay in order to isolate the well from the vertical we have what we know as a packer okay this this piece is set in here so your tubing string this is going to be your tubing like I said. It's going to be two and three eighths or two and seven eighths, generally speaking. On the outside of that, we'd have what we coin as casing. It's technically the annulus, if you want to get technical. But this would be your casing, as in the casing pipe and cement. Inside this is a gap between the tubing and the actual casing. So that would be... It's actually known as your annulus, but for us in production, we know it as casing. Right? So... This is this. Okay, so this actually goes all the way down inside your well. You've got your packer set here. And what right here is, is we would know that as a standing valve. So this is like a one-way check. So fluid, oil, gas, and water can come through the standing valve, but it cannot go back. Some companies set up a standing valve. Some don't. All just depends. Uh, it's company preference, engineering preference, yada, yada, yada. So... The way this system works is you have high pressure valves that are set throughout the tubing string. Now, these are just relative numbers I did for an example. Um, they're all going to be spec'd differently uh, based on uh, your fluid weight, you know, it's just tubing size, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot to it. That's a that's an engineering, something I'm not paid enough to know. <laughs> so. Anyway, so these valves are strategically placed throughout the wellbore. So what you would end up doing is taking high pressure gas and injecting it into the casing side of the well like this. Okay, it's going to come through here. That gas is going to go into your casing and it's going to start pressuring up. Now, as pressure rises, you'll notice the valves are from highest to lowest. So when 1170 is hit, this valve this is actually your bottom valve, known as your orifice valve, which is always open. But for the, so this valve is always open. So when your casing gas hits 1190, this valve is going to open. 1210, this valve opens. 1230, this valve opens. 1250, this valve would open the very top one. Now the the idea behind it is, okay, so you've got oil, gas, and water flows up into the tubing. As it gets here, it doesn't have enough gas to push it out. So you're injecting now these the ports in the gas lift valves are, are very small so it's not like you're going to push a whole lot of gas through to push your fluid so with that as pressure builds you start pushing get injecting gas into right here but if your fluid head is way up here you're not going to get that to the surface so the casing has to continue to pressure up so once you hit 1250 you'll start you t what happens is the gas gets injected here and it comes straight up the tubing like this you're going to get that fluid off keep it, it you know constantly happens and what happens is your casing pressure is actually going to drop so this valve is going to end up shutting this valve it grows to the next valve and now you start lifting all this fluid right once that's good 
and you start getting gas to help assist you and you get clean this fluid out from here to here, this valve will end up shutting, casing pressure is gonna drop, you'll start lifting off this valve, right? The goal is to drop casing pressure all the way down to the orifice valve and lift this entire string of fluid out. So, if that makes any sense, if not, I can, uh, I will definitely take comments, questions, and we'll be glad to follow up. Gas lift is, uh, it kind of works a little different than what your mind's programmed. However, once you uh, take a step back and look at it, it, it really makes sense. And this is very popular, uh, especially in areas that, you know, newer fields where free flowing wells are dying off, but uh, you see a lot of hydraulic fracturing going on where wells can be hit by frack and they start producing a lot of heavy water. Um, gas lift is a popular thing to do. Um, you'll see a lot of this in the Permian. Uh, we used to have a lot of it in the Eagleford. Uh, I assume they have it up north. Uh, can't, can't particularly say, but I'm, I'm fairly certain because this is fairly popular. Now, once you start running out of gas, then you're going to end up bringing in the pumping units. So rod pumps but anyway this is a uh, gas lift in a nutshell i kept this pretty short i can go into more detail if need be um but i think you get the the gist of it anyway so uh until next time we'll talk to you later thanks